American Simone Biles has won more world championship medals in gymnastics than anyone else ever. There's only one thing missing from her resume, and it's happening in August. Allie Raisman would love to go with her to Rio and compete in her second Olympic Games after being the captain of the Fierce Five that won gold in London. Today in Everett, Washington, is their next logical step to the Olympic Games. Welcome to the 2016 Pacific Rim Championships presented by Hershey's. The snow-capped Cascades to our right, the Pacific Ocean to our left. We are in Everett, Washington, just north of Seattle for the Pacific Rim Championships. China's here, Japan, New Zealand, Canada, the United States, of course. And we welcome you this afternoon to Xfinity Arena on NBC Sports. I'm Al Troutwick, surrounded by gold medalists, Tim Daggett, Nastia Lukin. We also have Andrea Joyce working with us today. But we haven't seen Simone Biles, Tim, in a while, but she's still the star of the show. What does this event mean to her as far as the Olympics go? Well, you know, I mean, first of all, she's got 14 world medals. Ten of them are gold at this point in time. And everybody in the world is trying to catch up with her. And the problem is Simone just keeps getting better and better. Uh, she is unveiling something on vault that, in my opinion, makes her a contender to win five Olympic medals this summer in Rio. Wow, we have a lot to look forward to. Does Allie Raisman have the Olympics to look forward to right now? I would say yes. You know, I think as of right now, she is going to Rio. And, you know, this will be the first time since the 2000 Olympic Games when Dominique Dawes and Amy Chow, of course, were there uh, after the 96 Olympics. All right, Tim, you've been talking to me about Laurie Hernandez, a big new face. Yeah, she's fantastic. She has got so much energy, so much passion, and she actually complements Team USA so well in the strengths that she has. She makes really an un unbeatable team right now, even more unbeatable. She's fabulous. We begin with the American women on floor exercise. You're looking at a real veteran, Brenna Dowell, from Missouri, NCAA experience. Yeah, she actually was at the University of Oklahoma and, and left to come back and try to make the world team, which she did in 2015, and be a part of that Rio squad. She had a very disappointing world championships, though. Her stable event is the uneven bars where she's world class, and she hit routine after routine, she told us, and the one she missed happened to come in the meet the first day, and it was, it was a very big blow for her. Stayed in. for Team USA, but Tim, as you said, you know, the uneven bars is where she really excels, and we'll see her later on in the competition on that event. We'll get your Brenna Dowell's score. Next up is 
Reagan Smith. Tell me about her, Nasty. Oh, she is just so cute. <laughs> no, I, her, her gymnastics is, is really amazing, but, you know, lacking a little experience. She's new to the senior level, but this Florentine might be my favorite Florentine just because she's so cute. So tiny, but, boy, she's got a little bit of personality, a little bit of vim and vigor in her. She's got a little Kim's Mescal in her, too. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, yeah. Her coach, of course. This is Marta Caroli. She's in charge of the women's program. She has plenty of help in helping select this team, but ever since she came on the scene, the United States has had unprecedented success. And this is really unusual because she is actually right by the floor. For competition, she is typically seated at the dais along with the rest of the selection committee, but... Well, because this is an international competition, you know, normally she would be standing with the other coaches, so I'm sure even in an arena like this where it looks like a national championship, she's trying to treat it just like any other international meet. Well, here she is. Actually born in this century. It's unbelievable. <laughs> yeah, that's incredible, right? <laughs> Oh, she could be an instant classic. Absolutely. I hope she knows who Morticia was. <laughs> you know what? A lot of people try to do playful, but very few can actually pull it out. She looks like she has fun out there. More of Team USA to come right here in Everett, Washington in the Xfinity Arena. The 2016 Pacific Rim Championships presented by Hershey's. Hello, happy. Hello, Hershey's. By Kellogg's. See you at breakfast. And by AT&T. Mobilizing your world. Smith. Hello world, my name is Lori Hernandez. Hello world, I'm Allie Raisman. Welcome to the 2016 Pacific Rim Championships presented by Hershey's. <gasps> oh. <laughs> Back here in Everett, Washington, we can update the first two scores. Brenda Dowell got a 14.55 and Reagan Smith gets a 14.3. Here's one of your favorites, guys, Lori Hernandez. And this routine is awesome. If she doesn't pull you in on this, I don't, it's just fantastic.
Body language just <laughs> screams out, I've got this. Absolutely. And she's turning 16 in the Olympic year. You know, it's. I tell you, you see the way she moves out there, her dancing abilities? She could dance like that when she was 10 years old. Just amazing. And now Courtney McGregor from Christchurch, New Zealand. Much more on her story as she returns to the event where she debuted. Difficult vault, a double twisting. Your chick a little bit shy on getting that around, that twist all the way around. So, you know, she really doesn't generate enough power into the table. Her run maybe not quite as quick. And because of that, because her arms are a little bent, she see those knees bent a little bit. She, has to take that hop forward on the landing. Just doesn't quite have enough oomph to get it all all the way around. She's doing a second vault. Why is that? Uh, because there are event finals here, just like at a Worlds and Olympic Games, and to make it to the event finals, you have to not just do two vaults, but you have to do two different vaults that are from what we call different families. So she's going to actually do very complicated. She'll do a, a, a round up or a half turn onto the board. Then she'll leave the board, do another half turn immediately, leave the vaulting table, and do a front layout with a half twist. And she did everything I said, but she didn't do a front layout. She had to, didn't have enough rotation on that, had to grab her legs. Yeah, she definitely, you know, piked down a lot <laughs> on that one. But, you know, she has some pretty good difficulty. And, you know, she seems like she's been really excelling in the last few years since the first time we saw her. Lori Hernandez with a big smile. Still haven't posted her score. Things were a little slower today than normal. So she's going to Rio in your mind? Well, you know, I feel like she's she's definitely one of those that's fighting for that fourth and fifth spot. It's a five-member team. If the team was picked today, she's on my team. That's quite a vote. first tumbling run it just goes on forever one of the hardest combinations ever done in gymnastics right here Guys, I feel like we're in London. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Just about to say, and that's why she's the Olympic champion on the floor exercise. That was huge. Coach Mihai Breschin right there, her longtime coach, also was in London. That, that was fantastic. Just so much power. 
when Ali came back into training, it was interesting what Mihai did. He basically paid no attention to him. He said, listen, you want to get ready? Go do it in the corner of the room, and I'll, I'll tell when I think you're ready. <laughs> so this first pass, it is just element after element, all done in combination, makes it so hard, can barely fit this in. Backflip, one and a half twists, right into this double Arabian, two flips, and this is what's insane. Somehow, she finds the floor and rebounds into a front layout out of it. She's been doing it for a long time, but every time, I'm just amazed. And a huge double layout as her third tumbling pass, which is very difficult to do just alone <laughs> when you're not exhausted in the middle of your routine. Finishing strong, she does a double pike somersault, great opening of the body, and the slightest little hop backwards. That was big time right there. Now, see, where's Gabby Douglas? Well, Gabby Douglas competed earlier at the American Cup competition where she won the title. So she's taken a little bit of a much, a very well deserved rest, but gearing up to the national championships and Olympic trials later this summer. She actually was in a meet, uh, an, another team meet, a couple of weeks back in Italy, where she once again won the all around title. Two for two, but hasn't this year hasn't competed against Simone Biles, yeah. so that'll be later in the year. Great score for wow. Ali Raisman, 15.6. Simone Biles, right after London, that's when she burst onto the scene. She won everything in sight. She's about as unstoppable as you can be. I said it last summer. I still believe it, even more so now. She is the most dominant female athlete in any sport in the entire world. Brand new floor routine for her. <laughs> Coaches around the world might only have two words to say. Uh-oh. <laughs> oh, my God. That is just, like, ridiculously great. Coach Amy Borman right there. Now, see, how hard is it to do those bounces off the, the, <laughs> the floor? For her, I don't think it's not hard at all. <laughs> For others, maybe a little difficult. But no, you know, it's, it's so interesting looking in, into the arena. Her smile is just contagious. I'm looking at these people, and everybody is just smiling watching her. The tumbling, though, is unbelievable. Just power like nobody else. This is a double layout with a half turn. It's really cool when you can do a move and you go, yeah, it's called the Biles. <laughs> but, you know, we talked with her before the competition. This is a new floor routine, and there are a lot of people out on the Internet that were criticizing it, saying they didn't like the music. She was a little frustrated with that. Hey, folks, clue you in on something. She could do her floor routine to Mary Had a Little Lamb, and she'd win the Olympic gold. Now the United States is done with the rotation. We will get her score. The amazing story of Courtney McGregor and a recap of the men's competition next on NBC. We're back in Everett, Washington. First rotation complete. Team USA is in front of 16.05 for Simone Biles on floor. Meanwhile, 
the men competed last night here in this very same arena, and Team USA won comfortably, Tim. Yes, they did. Remember, this is their last team competition as well before the Olympic Games. Danell Wittenberg did a smashing still rings routine. Huge dismount. He did another big one right here on parallel bars. He was leading the way through much of the competition. Sam McCulloch, who also is coming back from an injury. Look at this. About as perfect as you can get. That was his second event. And I'll tell you, he spots the ground. Look at his eyes are looking at that floor right there, right around the side, and just grabs hold of that floor. Another guy who is coming back from major surgery, Jake Dalton, on his shoulder. And this is his biggest test. And when I saw him do that, that push up to a plunge, I thought, you know what? I think Jack, Jake is right back in the game and on track, without a doubt. But the day ended on a little bit of a down note because John Orozco, after doing that on the high bar, did this on the pommel horse. His relationship with that apparatus continues to be rocky. It concludes a very rough year where he lost his mom and got hurt again. Here's Andrea Joyce. John, you're coming off what you called the worst year of your life. What does it mean to you to be able to be back out there competing like this? It means the world to me, honestly. When I tore my Achilles for the second time after my third career-ending injury, potentially, I almost wasn't sure if I was going to be able to come back and so fast in the Olympic year. But uh, here I am, and I'm just I'm really thankful to be out here competing again. And uh, obviously, I, I, I got off of the right foot coming back for Winter Cup and the Elite Team Challenge. But uh, there's a, a, a few uh, things I need to keep working on, especially getting out there, nerves and a team environment too for the first time in two years, so. What does it tell you about where you are though, more specifically about Pommel after what happened in the last rotation? Pommel horse is just a little bit of a struggle for me right now because I, I haven't been out there in a team atmosphere in two years, so uh, I really did feel the pressure and I'm hoping that it will only go uphill from here and I learn how to focus and gather myself and really put on the performance that I know I can. Hey, good luck the rest of the way leading to Rio. Thank you so much. How do you not root for that man? You were at the service for his mom. Tell me about the emotional state John was in then. I was, and it was very emotional. You know, he hugged me and he said, I'm not sure how I'm ever going to compete again because every single competition he looks into the stands and he sees his mother, but he was able to pull it off last night. Wow, how is he going to get that pommel horse out of his head? Well, that is such a big deal, Al, because, you know, really for him, his value comes a lot on the pommel horse. And all you have to do is remember back to 2012, the U.S. men, they won the qualifying round of competition. But John Orozco, he fell to pieces on pommel horse. He had a chance to win the all-around, and it happened again. Not good for his case. Now Reagan Smith, Team USA, is just feet in front of us now on the vault. You know, we talked about her being so tiny. And, you know, it's amazing that she's able to do the vault that she does because when you see a little girl, she's a little girl. When you see somebody like this, it is so hard to compress the board to get enough power to be able to do this vault. It's very difficult. Double twisting, laid out your chanka. Oh, boy. Whew. What happened? Kind of got a little lucky on that. She was really low on the table had to bend her elbows. It almost looked like she might have even hit her head. And when you do that, you just don't get a bounce off of the table at all. Let's look right here. So as she throws her arms back, you see that they bend a little bit. Her head was way nowhere near it, as I thought. Throws her head out a little bit on the twisting, but. But you know, being that tiny definitely <laughs> helps oh. sometimes. And yeah, it that does. might have helped right there. She had an unbelievable competition at that meet that Gabby Douglas won her second all-around title. Reagan was second in the all-around, and she told us that when that happened, that was the first time she believed she could actually make it to Rio. Yeah, she said she, both of them actually, Lori and Reagan said, you know, they feel comfortable now here competing with the Olympians, the world champions. They, you know, they finally feel like they actually belong. She'll do the same vault that we just saw Reagan do. She has a little bit more oomph, gets a little bit more power and a little bit more height. 
definitely went a little bit higher, but had a you know pretty big hop on the landing, which will cost her a little bit. Yeah, and that was unusual. I've seen her do a bunch here in Everett. And, you know, that had great power, great height, but you got to be able to control it, put that landing gear out, and she takes a very large step. But you see really good block from the table, but those feet way in front of her and slides back. We'll get her score in a moment. Meanwhile, Courtney McGregor comes from New Zealand. The city is Christchurch where these days everybody who survived the earthquake knows how tough they are. Here's Andrea Joyce. Well, Al, New Zealand did not qualify a team for the Olympics, but Courtney is expected to nail down an individual spot when she competes next week at the test event in Rio. Her journey, her Olympic journey, has been nothing short of dramatic. You might remember, as you mentioned, five years ago, a horrific earthquake in New Zealand. Christchurch destroyed their gym. 180 people died. Thousands of lives were disrupted. Somehow, the junior gymnastics team persevered. They stuck together. One year later, Courtney Courtney made her international debut right here in this very arena in Everett. Now, she at that time told me, she told me again to this week, she said, I never knew then that I could do what I've done, and I never expected to be where I am. I always thought that the Olympics were just unattainable, an unattainable dream. And I asked her about being back in this arena. She's happy to be here, but she said, you know what? It was a lot bigger four years ago. <laughs> it always seems that way. That's cute. Very powerful gymnast. A lot of times when you see the power gymnasts, they, their best event is typically not the uneven bars, and that's the case with Courtney. A little short on all of her handstands. I think you did that move. Yep. Nastia <laughs> called a ginger. Just a little better. A little higher. Full twisting double and a good landing, but really not going to bring in one of the, the top scores on uneven bars tonight. A Allie Ray's been waiting for the uh, go sign. Boy, have we seen that face put through some stress or what? <laughs> Absolutely. So she also was in. part of that 2015 team. And the one thing that Allie has been known for her entire career is how stable she is. And she actually came off on the uneven bars at the World Championships and she struggled on vaulting and was not her rock solid self. She came back in the team finals, did a very strong performance. This is really hard though, it's called an Aminar. Oh. Just had way too much power. And you know, she competed recently at that meet in Italy that Gabby Douglas won, and she sat that vault down, didn't have enough power. This one just had way too much jump in it, but very difficult. We'll see Simone do this same vault, two and a half twists. Every time you take a step, and those are big steps, they're supposed to be three tenths of a point. This is one of the better vaults I've seen Allie do. In a little bit of form in the air, she typically has that, but bounding forward one, two big steps, that's six tenths off right there. You know, Nasia, you and I were having a conversation with Tim about social media and how when you won your gold medal, you didn't have to deal with that, but you deal with it now as a very public person. Allie Raisman's dealing with it, Simone Biles too, critiques of the music. It's a very harsh world, as everyone who uses it knows. I mean, how do they get by with it? You know, I, I honestly can't even imagine. You know, as you said, in, in 2008, I didn't have a Twitter. I didn't have an Instagram. You know, I had a Facebook that was for my personal friends. And now they see everything, every single moment. She can do this flawlessly. Oh, boy. And a big step forward. That was very un-Simone-like. It still was the best Aminar or Yurchenko two and a half being done in the world today, without a doubt, now, even with that big step. Is this the vault that's new, that's coming up? Yeah, yes, it is. 
This vault right here, she's been doing for a long time. Her second vault isn't as strong, but is now even valued higher. But look at just that big bounding step forward. And so Simone has never competed this vault. And she says that in the last few months, she hasn't missed any, but you, she said, you never know, you know, competition. Still a great score. Yeah, absolutely. She, she can typically get about two, two and a half tenths higher. This is very intricate and super difficult. It's called a chang. You know, that was, to be completely honest, probably the worst one we have seen all week, and still, that was incredible. Absolutely. Yeah, she was a little bit high on the table. Didn't get the... But she pulled it out, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, this right here, last year at the World Championships, those two vaults, this would have been, in my opinion, she would have gotten the gold medal just a little bit high on the table. Small little hop back. But all week long we watched her do it, and she just, it was perfection. I mean, it was just as if she's been doing it for years. Yeah, she actually had to really work in the air to get this all the way around. And usually Simone, after she hits the table, it's all about calming down and just getting ready for the landing because she has so much more power than, than anybody else. So we're waiting for Simone Biles' score. We'll take a break here in the 2016 Pacific Rim Championships. When we come back, we'll see what Canada is bringing to the party. The first Saturday in May, the race for the Triple Crown begins. Could they do it again? The Kentucky Derby coverage begins May 4th on NBCSN, and it all heads up to the big race Saturday, May 7th on NBC. Al Troutwick, Tim Daggett, Nastia Lucan, Andrea Joyce, and Simone Biles just continues to amaze. 15.8 was pretty good. She puts up a 15.95, and watching it all, Marta Caroli there with Mihai Breschen. They have to love what they see so far. I don't know how you couldn't love it. <laughs> I mean, it's like, really, what it comes down to is Team USA, they could take their second team and they could go to the World Championships or an Olympic Games and they could win. There are girls that are going to be off, left off of this team that are legitimate medal contenders, Olympic medal contenders, and they're not going to even get a chance to go. That's how good Team USA is right now. It's got to be fascinating to think behind the scenes what goes on, the friendships how everything gets stretched. Okay, Canada. Megan Roberts. So Team Canada actually qualified their team directly to Rio from the 2015 World Championships. So won't have to face that dreaded test event, you know, to try to get their spot. They needed to be in the top eight in the team, and they did that in Glasgow. Great difficulty. Her opening tumbling pass is actually one of the same passes we saw Allie Raisman do earlier. Yeah, she actually does them very well. A lot of difficulty. She's actually improved quite a bit. 
on floor exercise. As Nastia mentioned, her opening tumbling run, very, very difficult. A lot of gymnasts will do this Arabian double front, and they'll do it in what's called a tucked position. So they're kind of, their knees are bent, their hips are bent, and it's the easiest position to rotate quickly. And when you make it piked, keep those legs straight, it is so much more difficult, and she handles that extremely well. A little bit of a leg separation, but that pass is very hard. Double pike, pretty common pass that a lot of gymnasts use as well, but great routine for Team Canada. Back-to-back -back gymnasts from Canada, from the oh, province yeah. of Ontario, different gyms though. <laughs> well, Megan likes it, 14.0. Next up is her teammate, Kirsten Peterman. She competed at the 2014 World Championships in Nanning, China. Her top placing was 32nd in the world on vaulting. Nasty, you mentioned that test event coming up later this month in Rio and how Canada doesn't have to go. Unbelievably, the once powerful nation of Romania does have to go to qualify for the Olympic Games. Could you imagine the Olympics happening without Romania? No. <laughs> yeah, I, Absolutely not. I can't even imagine it either. It's uh, unbelievable. And, and they have a very uphill battle. Their top gymnast, Larissa Yordaki, is injured right now. And... Uh, it's looking pretty brutal at this point in time for Romania. Contrast that to Team USA. They're looking pretty awesome as we take you to the third rotation and continue with the 2016 Pacific Rim Championships in Everett, Washington. Halfway through, and the United States is ahead by a bunch. And by the way, Australia, they were in a competition in a separate grouping earlier today, so we're not going to see them here. Canada just unable to keep up with Team USA at this point, and they are just putting up some amazing scores. Now, Tim, it's April. The road to Rio takes us to August. What's the schedule looking like? Well, there's a lot of different things. Actually, the first competition will be in Hartford, Connecticut. And uh, that'll start everything off. That'll be the classic for the girls and the nationals for the men. And then we head to St. Louis for the first set of nationals for the women. And that will be actually the final trials for the men and then the final trials for the women in July in San Jose. So a little different. Yes, it, it is. You got that out? <laughs> yeah. I... And this is a big routine. You see Marta watching right here. Remember, she's the architect here and really 
the main person, you know, she has a committee that acts along with her to make decisions, but if Marta Caroli doesn't want you on the team, in my opinion, you are not on the team. And Allie, who has been such a rock, she started great on floor, but didn't have the best vault. And remember at the World Championship, she struggled and came off the uneven bars. Very uncharacteristic for her. Exactly, she's really known for her consistency. Not always her best event, the uneven bars, but she always manages to pull through. She's really a power gymnast. And what she's known for is how consistent she is on balance beam. Just wants to survive this one. Double front. And it was good. She can be better than that. Now, guys, can Team USA afford to have a quote-unquote specialist? Well, it's it's going to be, it, they're going to make that decision. And we're going to see somebody in this rotation who is in the mix, basically because of the uneven bars only. Ashton Locklear a little bit later. Okay, we came on the air with lots of great things to say about Lori Hernandez, with good reason. For more on her deal, let's go to Andrea. Hey, Al, Lori has a chance to make a bit of history this year. She could be one of the first Olympians born in the 2000s. Talk about feeling old. She turned 16 in June, and like a true millennial, social media is a big part of Lori's daily life. She takes pride in her clever posts, like the Instagram shot she had this week, dabbing our way to the Pack Rim Championships. And when you talk to Lori, you'd never know that she's in the midst of an extremely competitive, stressful couple of months. Pressure? Lori says, oh, I used to cry crack, but I'm a lot more mature now. Al? <laughs> <laughs> That's she, what being 15 it. does, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she says, you know, a lot of stress, but she says, every day I wake up, I am one step closer to August, one step closer to my lifelong dream you know, of being an Olympian. It's bold to say that, you know, when you grew up being as bold like that, you were telling us earlier, you had pictures of the Olympic medals on your desk, right? I absolutely did. I, right when the Olympic medals were released from Beijing, I printed those out, put them on my vision board. And then what did mom do? Mom went and found my dad's Olympic gold medal and hung it right on there. How awesome is that? Cool. So you're looking for perfect handstand positions. Nice release right there. She'll do another one right here. A little close, but manages to pull it off. And one more connected down to the low bar. Well, that was great handstand work right there and another pretty good one. She said that when she was younger, gymnastics was all fun and games. Still fun now, but no more games, she says. And that's her coach, Maggie Haney. She's got the face for a winner, right? Love her body language. Yeah, very, very confident. Very confident and, and cool especially under pressure. You know, the team competition is the most pressure you really will ever feel. Beautiful. Takachev release move. That's where she was a little close right there, but then she does it again from staller position. Did it great there. And this is her first time on NBC too, right? No, I, I think she's actually, as a junior, I think she's made air for us. She was the her floor junior, team, I think, one time. junior national yeah. champion last year on floor. In 2014, though, she was injured. She dislocated her patella and tore that patella tendon. Took about six months of recovery. But she says that from 2014 to 2016, she feels her gymnastics has just skyrocketed. I concur. Miles, big part of Team USA and that huge lead. You know, the Anima Bars used to be the event that she always told us she just absolutely hated it and just dreaded the event. 
Hey, what's our anticip anticipation meter like at this point? It's April. She's been all about August for a long time. You know, I think the hardest part for her right now is just the waiting game. You know, having yeah. the patience. I mean, it's, yeah. it's so close, yeah. but yet it's still months away. And I asked her, I said, so Simone, if we could make the Olympic Games two weeks from now, would you do it? And she was like, oh God, I'd love to, but no, absolutely not. She said, if you told me three months ago that it was gonna be in two weeks, I'd have been really happy. And the score is in for Lori. Hernandez, 14.8. Now back to Simone Biles, who's had a little extra time to think about things. You know, she's a, a world medalist on this event, and it's, it's her weakest event. But when you're as great as she is, the weakness is all relative. <laughs> Her release is right here. And this is the most critical one because it's done in combination. Right here and now to the low bar. Beautiful. A little bit over on that. Full twisting double, done in combination, and bam! Gymnastics 101, baby. Fly high and stick the landing. Here's that combination move we were talking about. A piked Takachev into an immediate pack salto, and she just floats. It's, it's beautiful. Yeah, it's one of my favorite moves in all of gymnastics. It's just such a beautiful looking element. And of course, the dismount right to the handstand. Because she connects that skill into this, she gets some extra bonus, and that the judges don't get to take a deduction on. No, Marta Caroli wants a close-up look of her number one player back after this. Simone Biles with her potential new teammate, Laurie Hernandez, gets a 15.05 on the uneven bars. What do you think of that score? Well, that's pretty good. You see her execution in 8.9, which, you know, I think in the international <laughs> judging system, I think it was pretty fair. Maybe a little low. <laughs> Back for a little bit more of Team Canada, Brittany Rogers. She's an Olympian, 2012. Very powerful vaulter. Nice double twisting laid out Yurchenko. She's actually competing here this weekend and next weekend, she'll be competing at the NCAAs for the University of Georgia. Long been a very good vaulter, gets her arms back pretty well. Good form in the air and a nice body position when she's landing. If you see the gymnast and they are leaned forward in their hips, you know, even if they stick it, the judges can really, they can be brutal, but her hips are pretty open. Just that one step backwards, but a pretty strong ball. Yeah, she is part of Georgia, as you said. And the gym dogs have been to the national championships 32 times and got just a boatload of titles. One of the most successful collegiate programs in the country. Well, Athens is an Olympic city, isn't it? Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. She was. 10th on vault at the 2015 World Championships. Very nicely done. So that's a similar vault that we saw from Simone Biles. She did it well, but she, and this is what Simone used to do, but now she adds another full twist to it, which just jacks up that potential starting score. Allie Raisman, 14.3. You see that 8.3 execution score, you know, so that means she had 1.7 off in that routine. She knows it's not her best event. And 
And here is Ashton Locklear from Team USA from North Carolina. And this event for her is just is just fantastic. If she can hit this routine, this is this is really why she's on this team at the Pacific Rim. And why she could potentially make the team to Rio. It's all because of the uneven bars. She's got one of the nicest lines, beautiful gymnastics. She would qualify for that team, not going to do more than than bars and possibly balance beam, but she would really be a specialist. So she has to, she really needs to make her case right here. Coming back from a major injury, tore her rotator cuff in 2015. Had that surgically repaired. But you see these skills, she puts her legs in between her hands and in between the bars. Which is very difficult. <laughs> and that gives her you know, a lot of bonus points. Another one right there, very, very tricky. Nice, floaty front somersault. Little low on that last pirouette. And great landing. She was in Italy as well and did great bar routines, but she told me she took steps on both of her routines and she says she really needs to key in on that and get those landings. She got that one. And now we revisit Christchurch, New Zealand's Courtney McGregor on the beam. She's gonna do, we don't see this very often anymore. She's gonna do run up to the board and she'll punch off of it and do a front flip onto the beam. Very few gymnasts nowadays are doing this. A lot of them like to just jump up and, and get it all started. And they can either go really wrong or really good, and that was really good. Very solid. skill to do a full turn. She makes it a lot more difficult by having her leg up. The dismount right here, double tuck. Actually a very strong routine. Probably the best we've seen her today, I would say. Yeah, great level of difficulty as well, starting from the mount and ending with that that great dismount. So as she goes through the post game on that, we'll go set for a little bit more Team USA on the uneven bars. Ashton Locklear, 15.55, is is that something that a specialist would get? Yeah, that's pretty darn good. You see that 9.05, she had less than a point off in deductions, and that is just plain ridiculously hard to pull off nowadays in, in gymnastics, men or women. Now on even bars for USA, Reagan Smith. Back to Reagan Smith. Her just mounting the uneven bars <laughs> is a big deal. She can walk right under the low bar standing on a board. <laughs> Also doing those inside skills. Another release right here. Transition to the low. Beautiful. She told me the pack rim is the biggest thing I've ever done. Nice job, I'll tell you. She's a little competitor. 
Her coach, Kim Zamesco, said, you know, all week she's just been trying to keep up with the older girls. If, if they go somewhere, she just tags along. <laughs> she just wants to be one of them. And today she sure is. Kim Zamesco right on the scene. Good job. Back after this. It's a very one-sided competition here in Everett, Washington. The United States is having their way with a huge lead over Canada and then Australia. In fact, if you look at the all-around individual standings, Team USA has the top five spots. Nastia, we're seeing Simone Biles at her best just as she was right after London. What impresses you the most about her? You know, I think her, her calm composure, you know, there is so much pressure on her right now because she has, she is the, not, Tim always says is the best athlete, but in this arena, she is the best gymnast in the world without a doubt. And so for her to be able to live up to that expectation in an Olympic year, knowing that the games are just a few months away. Tim, who's going to stand in her way potentially in Rio? Um, actually, no one stands in her way. That's unbelievable. Yeah, it is, it is all Simone Biles to win or lose and she she doesn't even need to be great at this point to win you know Allie Raceman is in second place right now and she's about 1.8 points behind her and Simone yeah Allie's great on beam and a great gymnast but you know Simone's a little better on beam she's the current world champion on beam so it's uh really the only person she needs to worry about is Simone Biles. How about Lori Hernandez? Stock up, stock even, or stock down today? I would definitely say stock up. You know, I think this is a pretty big competition for her, this team competition. That's really where you feel the most pressure because it's not just about competing for yourself. You're representing your country. And when you're up there on the balance beam, it's not just for you, it's for the entire nation. Team USA up on the always precarious balance beam. And we come back at the 2016 Pacific Rim Championships presented by Hershey's. Up next on NBC from Boston, it's the pairs, ice dance, and men's free skate events at the World Figure Skating Championships. That's next on NBC. Al Troutwick, Tim Daggett, Nastia Lukin, Andrea Joyce, and we're right here with Ashton Locklear of Team USA. You know, she's always been great on the uneven bars, and the balance beam for her isn't always as consistent as the uneven bars, so. For her, it's really about staying on the beam and starting the team off on the right start. You know, for all of these young ladies, it's really about dealing with the pressure and dealing with the stress of an Olympic year. Each and every one of them has a little bit of a different methodology. She says that she has tiny little goals that she uses to fill her brain, which helps her deal with the stress and keep the negative self-talk out of her head. That's a skill. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. And one that is desperately in need on this event. So really remember it's uneven bars and she was fourth at the 2014 World Championships on bars. That's what would get her ticket punched. Another athlete who's not here, Madison Koshin, is also somewhat of a specialist on the uneven bars. She was in the last World Championships, and she took home a gold. Had to share it with three other gymnasts, though. Pretty good, pretty calm. Yeah, you know, not as difficult as we'll see from someone like Simone Biles, but she really is a beautiful gymnast. Her lines, her 
very clean and elegant. Well, Ashton Locklear did a very good job for herself, not just for Team USA, but to up her stock with Marta Caroli. I would say job accomplished for her. And Marta is right there. She's in the front row of the balance beam. Of the five spots, how many do you think Marta has in her head as lockdown? I would say at, at least three or four. <laughs> called the side flip. A little unorthodox. And just the dismount right here. A really solid routine, you know? It's, uh, it's like Nastia, you mentioned, it's, we're gonna see much more difficult gymnastics from some of the other ladies, but very solid. And she's, she's like just to be back, you know, after that rotator cuff injury. She said that, you know, she didn't know if she would even have time to come back. She said it was very depressing for a while and then stink, things started to come along and she's very happy about that. Well, that's a big time rehab injury too, right? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. Any injury, you know, it's not even just, you know, as a person when you're injured, it's hard enough. And then as an athlete, of course, you have to not only get healthy, but then you have to start basically from scratch and building right back up on all of your events. <laughs> oh, a photo bomb. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I want some FaceTime. Back to Reagan Smith. Locklear gets a 14.45. So there you see her difficulty, not as high. Execution too, not, not so great. But again, this, is, this event for her was you know, great to stay on the beam. And this is just jam-packed. Lots of difficulty. Combination. Nicely done. Watch this right here. Back with a full. biggest contribution might come to Team USA. Balance Beat is definitely one of those events. I think it's her strongest. Wow. That was really great. <laughs> hey, Nasi, did it ever throw you off when you're up on the beam and someone's wacky music kicks in in the middle of it on the floor? <laughs> to be completely honest, I didn't hear a thing. Really? Yep. I guess you have to be that way. Yeah, you do. Boy, this was great. Look at that back handspring into a layout, lands with two feet, and this is what's so hard. Watch this. Actually, this is her dismount sequence. Just nonstop. You see her chest up on the landing. There we go. <laughs> oh, boy. And I'll tell you, one thing Marta loves is she loves kids that can do beam. If you can stay on balance beam, you are, you are near the top of the list. Still to come, we take this competition to the finish line. Allie Raisman on the beam.
you're looking at Olympic gold medalist Ali Raisman. Tim, I'll never forget, we were doing an event in Worcester, Massachusetts. She was the kid from Needham, so it was a home game for her. And you talk about bursting onto the scene. You remember that? Oh, absolutely. It was. She so overperformed in that competition, and I, I couldn't believe that she dealt with the pressure the way that she did at that point in time. And you know, from that point all the way through the London 2012 Olympic Games, it was it, that was her status quo. There, she's supposed to try to connect the, a leap out of that. Very solid routine. Dismount, one of the most difficult being done. It's called a Patterson, named after Carly Patterson. She do a half turn to a double front. Really good. Yep. Just besides that little wobble on her opening skill, that's the Allie Raisman we're used to seeing. Calm, confident. It starts with the coolest mount going, right? <laughs> yeah, I love it too. But Mihai, he's he's never completely happy, you know? I mean, it's all about, you know, every single little tenth. And he's going to point him out. <laughs> That's for sure. There's a switch leap half turn into immediate back pike. And you see her swing her arms a little bit. So kind of makes the judges think about giving that connection. But a beautiful front tuck. You see her chest straight up into a split jump. And she'll definitely get that one. Yes, that was absolutely. Very clean. This is, of course, the dismount right here. Can't twist too early on this, or your feet will miss the beam, and that's bad. But that right there, pretty great. Just a small step to the side. She shouldn't have to have anything explained to her about the value of tents here and tents there, right? No, no. It, she did a, a very nice job throughout the competition. Had that little bit of a bobble on vaulting with the big steps forward, but uh, uh, overall a very strong oh, night for Ali Raisman. Trying to finish up what's been a great competition for her so far. Big combination right here. Two layouts in a row. Great. Beautiful. It's one of my favorite tumbling sequence on the balance beam. We're seeing more and more gymnasts do two in a row like that. There are a lot of folks that remember a great American gymnast, three-time Olympian, Dominique Dawes. She actually somehow fit in four layout step-outs on me. Which I have no idea how it's possible. But she did it. <laughs> so far, so good. Oh boy, just a little bit off on that leap. Very nice, very difficult. Tips her head back, loses sight of the beam. Wow. These 
young ladies have been dangerous today. Un unbelievable. You know what? One of the things Simone said was, you know, people are always saying how easy we make it look. And she said the only way that it looks that easy is because we do so very much, and they do. If you were to watch these athletes in a day, the amount of turns they take, it's just staggering. But look at this beautiful layout, step out. She's, watch her look for that beam right there. See those eyes are just like laser beams on that beam and just slams those feet down. Yeah, the number of repetitions is crazy. Still Simone Biles to come on balance beam. But a quick check on the team that's been right behind the United States all day, albeit the gap is huge, but they're right there. And they were sixth at the last World Championships. She was part of the historic team for Canada that was fifth at the Olympics and just a little bit too far away from the bar. That, of course, is a devastating. You see, this is called a Jaeger, front somersault. She lets go a little bit too early. Her heels don't get over her head. And when you let go too early on a release, it's just there's, there's nothing you can do about it. Yep, and it doesn't feel good. <laughs> no. But like I said, she was part of the 2012 Olympic team that was fifth for Canada. Wow, like great. That's a veteran-like adjustment right there because she was way too close, had so much support on the bar. Oop. I think she clipped that bar, which hurts and is also a deduction. Well, as we said earlier, she'll be heading to the NCAA Championships right after this competition. She's going to be in Fort Worth, Texas for the second year in a row. I was reading after that earthquake five years ago, Christchurch is not nearly put back together. Still rubble everywhere, and they estimate it's going to cost $30 billion when they get that city back. Mm. Well, a nice finish for Courtney today. She did a very nice job. She's going to have to go to that test event in about a week and place high enough in the all-around to punch her ticket to Rio. After that, she has already signed a letter of intent with Boise State, and she'll be a Bronco next year. Well, it comes down to this. And you know, one of her first elements, we saw her take a pretty big fall on that. 
the other day during training. This is very difficult. Two and a half times around. For the wolf turn. So it comes up right here. It's a front flip with a half turn. Very difficult. Rock solid. Comes for series here. Two layouts in a row. And you know, she has told me that she's she gets frustrated with herself on B because she says in competitions she's never able to put together the routine she consistently does in training. And that comment is coming from a world champion on this event. This might be one of the best routines I've seen her do though. But this dismount right here is the hardest dismount in the entire world. Oh! Best routine ever. Wow! <laughs> oh. That, that was spectacular. That was just, I mean, people are gonna be watching this all over the world, the Russians, the Chinese. Everybody is going to be watching this and they're going to be like, give me a break. Obviously, Marta Caroli. Okay. That's the pack rim debrief right there. Here's that skill. The front with a half. Very nicely done. Beautiful back handspring, back layout. Back layout, two in a row. Just like we saw earlier. But that dismount, I mean, nobody does this better than Simone. And look at her chest up on the landing. I, I that, mean, <laughs> I got nothing. <laughs> that, that, was, that was incredible. That was incredible. Longtime coach Amy Borman right there with her. She really can't do much better than she did. She actually can be a little bit better on vault, but right there, without a doubt, no matter what anybody else did in the world at the Olympic Games come August, she does that in the all-around finals. She is the World Olympic all-around okay, champ, without okay, question. Come on, Brenna. Go, Bren. Allie Raceman did a really nice job for herself. Reagan Smith, that, that little one right there, came out and looked as unaffected as you could possibly be. Ashton Locklear did a great bar routine that puts her in contention if Team USA would use a specialist, and if they would, they would probably do it on the uneven bars. And of course, Lauren Hernandez right there, maybe didn't, isn't gonna end, <laughs> end up finishing as high in the all round as she thought she would, but certainly had a very, very strong day. 15.55, that locks Team USA to win this Pacific Rim Championship. Brenna Dowell. Still to go, so no pressure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you know, she's she's done an excellent job today. You know, she hit a bar routine. Very strong on floor exercise. And ending the competition and being last on beam. After that routine. <laughs> 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 yeah. But this this is a big test for her. You know, we, we talk about it repeatedly, but everything, everything is taken into consideration. Every time you walk out on the floor representing Team USA, Marta and the selection committee, they are taking note and literally taking note, marking it down. 
and factoring that in. Because this team, it, it will be selected. She was supposed to connect those two skills. You saw she a slight pause. Drives most of the media and the press crazy when these girls say, well, I just want to go out and hit four for four. But that is no easy task, and she is one dismount away from pulling that off and definitely helping herself out for chances for Rio. A very nice routine. Her longtime coach, Al Fong at Gage Gymnastics Center. Well, no one's sure who's going to Rio yet. Well, Simone we got, but this they do know. When they get to Rio, they'll be in good shape. Let's go across the floor to Andrea Joyce. Al Simone is so dominant, people just assume she's going to win. But how important is it for you personally to kick off your Olympic season with a performance like this? Yes, um, it was very important to just get back out there and compete again. And I mean, I, it was a little bit rough, I think, um, floor. I mean, I kind of lost a little bit of energy, so I still need to work on my endurance and work on my facials and all that. Um, but all the other events went pretty well. I mean, training's been good, so I'm glad I could just get out there and compete again. <laughs> well, you were worried, you told us, about the floor. It's a new floor routine, and you were worried about how the crowd would respond to the music. What do you think? Um, I think they responded well, just because it's like my first time. But I know deep inside that I still have a lot to work on. All right, and what is the most important thing for you now as you look ahead to the next couple of months? I know you don't like to look ahead. Um, just right now, consistency and staying healthy is the most important. And I'm just like, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Welcome back to the competition floor. It's great to see you. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. So Simone Biles, as dominant as you could be in this Pan Pacific Championship, when we come back, someone who may have taken a step toward joining her in Rio, Laurie Hernandez, back after this in Everett, Washington. The 2016 Pacific Rim Championships are presented by Hershey's. Hello, happy, hello, Hershey's. By Tide, find the Tide that's right for you at Tide.com. If it's gotta be clean, it's gotta be Tide. And by AT&T, mobilizing your world. And that's what Lori Hernandez looked like today. Let's find out what she takes out of this Pacific Rim Championships. So we're across the floor now to Andrea Joyce with Lori. Big new stage for Lori Hernandez. Um, what are you hoping that Marta saw from you out there today? I hope she saw the fact that I did my best to be clean and consistent. I hit four for four today. Actually, our whole heat team hit four for four today. And I'm just, I'm excited. This was a really good experience for all of us. First year for you as a senior, and it's an Olympic year. What is it like for you out there? Are you? I mean, you told us the other day you're not feeling pressure, but. I mean. When I said I wasn't feeling pressure, I think I really meant it. You know, today I went out there and I had a lot of fun with all the girls. I mean, they're so supportive. And I think in between events, we all just helped each other. And I, there was no pressure on me at all. I think we're just so good for each other. So moving ahead, as you look forward to the next couple of months, what do you think the biggest challenges will be? Will they be physical or mental? I think both. Maybe more mental than physical, because I think I just need a little bit more physical. And then 
the rest is all mental. The rest is, the rest is just like confidence and the fact that I know I can do it, I just have to do it. it looks like it's pretty hard to wipe the smile off your face. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> You have a big smile on your face, Nasia. You, you've been through this whole process. These little pearls of wisdom that Marta is giving these girls today, because she was very active, I thought, with the gymnasts. What types of things is she saying? Yeah, she absolutely was. And I think exactly what we heard Lori just say, it's the confidence. And she went out there today, and she was rock solid, and that is confidence. You know, she came out here under the big lights in a team competition, and when it mattered, she delivered. So, Tim, let's go back to the men. We summarized that composition, competition. What do they take out of this Pacific Rim? Well, they take, they got to get a lot better, and they can't fall down so much. Uh, Pommel Horse was really a disaster for the U.S. men's team, and it has been as of late, and they really need to get a handle on that. Yeah, they won, but if there were better teams here, they wouldn't have. Okay, so how does Simone play this now? She's been so awesome at staying consistently great. What does she do between now and these big challenges that are coming up? Same thing she's been doing. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, a, it's a waiting game now because she's ready, you know, and it's, it's really about staying healthy, as we always say, and about mentally stable. You know, there's so much pressure on her right now, and she just has to keep doing what she's doing. Does Lori Hernandez leave here feeling she's in it? Oh, absolutely. Uh, without a doubt, she should feel like she's in it. She ended up third. Allie Raisman was uh, second. Because of the two per country rule, she couldn't get the third place medal. But she was third in this competition, only a tenth away from Allie Raisman. Well, that is going to do it for us here in Everett, Washington. Coming up next on NBC, it's the World Figure Skating Championships as Team USA wins on the men's side and Team USA wins on the women's side. With Andrea Joyce and for Tim Daggett, Nastia Lucan, I'm Al Troutwick. Team USA, very, very successful at the 2016 Pacific Rim Championships presented by Hershey's. Thanks for watching.